I'll wake up this morning and I'm like, what the heck is going on? Missy Elliott? Busta Rhymes? Sierra. And then possibly Timbaland? And this is what I seen pop up on my timeline. Well, actually, it popped up as an advertisement. It didn't even pop up on my timeline. So I clicked the video, and then it popped up as an advertisement. I said, whoa, what is going on here? So check this out. These three icons come together to show you something you've never seen before. Mm, something not right. I this is not earth. I'm going to figure this out. I can't out. I done bust the wrong turn at Mars real quick. Said I can't breathe. I think I'm gonna faint. You're not about to faint. That's that corset is so tight. Let me call Tim, because I ain't even playing with y'all. Tim. Yo, Missy, where you at? He made a wrong turn. There will be no tour like it. Yes, in pure Missy fashion, the Out of This World tour on brand kicks off this summer. As you can see, it also features Sierra Busta Rhymes and, of course, Timbaland. You can catch that tour in North Texas July 20th at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth. A lot of fans are excited that they finally get to see Missy for the first time on stage. It's hard to believe that she's never done her very own tour. Tickets go on sale this Friday. So, um, Missy is doing a tour. I can't even lie. I'm a little bit excited. I am not a person that go, likes to go to a lot of major concerts. Uh, and one of the reasons that I don't is just I don't I don't think that performances are what they need to be. You're going to have to actually be um, something that I want to see in order for me to spend money. And this is a, a, a tour that I will probably go and visit. I think that the last the last concert what's the last concert that I went to. Oh, Usher. The last show that I went to was Usher and I thought that Usher was awesome. Uh, one of the best concerts that I ever visit that I ever went to was Coldplay. The last time that they did a North American tour, we went to Coldplay. That was awesome. And, you know, I get free tickets here and there from different places and for suites to go and see something. I think I seen Lil Wayne or something like that. But um, this is more up my alley. This is my speed. This is definitely my speed. So um, I am going to be getting tickets. Actually, I think I already got tickets. Yeah, I already got my tickets. So. You know, they be having the pre-sale, the early event for certain people or whatever like that. So definitely got that. I'm going to be reading these Super Chats. Shout out to the dog, Jay Woodfin, in the building. I appreciate you, bro, for tapping in. I'm going to be reading that Super Chat shortly. But, yes, I will be going to this concert. I will be sitting front row. Hopefully, I can get a suite. I would prefer to be as well. Maybe this is more of a front row concert. So, yeah, Missy Elliott. Uh, and friends is going to be doing her thing, especially Timbaland. I'm a Timbaland fan, all right? So that's first things first. Uh, in addition to that, Jonathan Majors, I covered this yesterday on the Anton Daniels channel, but Jonathan Majors was recently sentenced. Uh, check it out. This is new at 11. Marvel actor Jonathan Majors just learned his sentence this morning, and it comes after a Manhattan jury found him guilty of assaulting and harassing his ex-girlfriend. News 4's Romney Smith at the criminal courthouse in lower Manhattan with the judge's decision this morning. Romney. Good morning to you, Adam. You know, the judge said after consulting both sides and the fact that Jonathan Majors had no prior criminal history, that jail was not appropriate in this particular situation. But he still wanted to hand down a sentence that would benefit Majors and also that something the victim would approve of as appropriate. Earlier today, inside the courtroom, I was there as everyone took their time talking. The judge sentenced actor Jonathan Majors to a 52-week in-person domestic violence counseling program. He has to continue his current therapy. A restraining order will be enforced for the victim and he can only have contact with Grace Jabari in court in future legal proceedings. He was also fined $250. Now Majors is the actor found innocent on two charges, but he was convicted for reckless assault in the third degree and harassment, neither of which is a felony. All charges are related to a domestic violence incident involving his ex-girlfriend Grace Jabari. Jabari claims that Majors broke her finger, twisted her arm behind her back, hit her, and pushed her in the backseat of a vehicle. As a result of being found guilty on two counts, the mega movie studio Marvel fired Majors from a big role as Kane the Conqueror in an upcoming movie series. Majors has denied ever physically abusing a woman. Major didn't speak today, but his lawyer spoke on his behalf and said that he would not be saying anything and would be remain mute today. And the reason is because he she didn't want anything that he 
he could have said to be used against him in an upcoming federal civil trial that his victim will be filing. He said. So that's the play. A lot of people was trying to figure out, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Why is this even a big deal? Jonathan Majors is going to be okay. I seen somebody in the chat said Jonathan Majors is going to be okay, right? And why would Jonathan Majors appeal this in the first place? Why is he appealing a, a criminal charge to where he only has to do 52 weeks in person counseling? He's not actually going to have no jail time. Well, it's a couple different reasons. Number one, because I don't believe that he's guilty. They don't believe that he's guilty. Uh, obviously, they don't believe that this is going to affect him um, as far as him going to jail. But number one, it took away a lot of money out of his pocket, especially when it comes to the roles that he missed. The second thing is, and I'll probably be covering this on After Hours tonight, is that there's an upcoming civil trial. So the fact that he was convicted in criminal court, regardless of how bad or how severe the, the, the sentencing was, the real play was the money. So the ex-girlfriend now has an upcoming civil trial. Money. You aligning yourself with the wrong woman is going to cost you on the front end and the back end. Not only are you, going, are you going to lose movie roles, but you're also going to possibly be in a civil trial to where she can now ask for money and then who knows how much that civil trial is going to be. So not only is this costing them in lawyers, it costed them money when it came to, um, you know, his movie roles that he lost. And she's taking him to civil trial. And I'm supposed to be the guy that sit here and advocate for men to put themselves in a situation under duress without informing them of what the pros and the cons could be as a result of it. Somebody tell me or somebody help me to understand why I should be quiet and making sure that I warn these guys or I keep them informed on what the possibilities could be if they align themselves with the wrong person. Imagine running away from somebody that's chasing you down the street, suing you and prosecuting you and pressing charges on you. Imagine that. Imagine on a New York street where we have all of this surveillance technology and where a woman could run, a, run, chase you down, go out and party the same night. Go out and party the next night. Then she can come back, press charges against you, sue you, and ruin your complete life. Everything that you work for for your entire life is all down the drain. Imagine a life. Imagine a day. Imagine a time that this is real. I can do a whole segment on this, but this is just quick hits. Don't worry about it. I'm going to cover it in, a, in another video on the Anton Daniels channel. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna read, and I'm going to read Super Chat shortly. Uh, also, out here in these streets, uh, shout out to uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Come on back to the front of the congregation. And also developing tonight, a triple shooting in West Philly. They're on the 5300 block of Chancellor Street. That was around 530 tonight. And, Seanette, the good news here. All the victims are stable tonight. That is true, Jason. But as you can imagine, neighbors are traumatized. Police did not say how many shots were fired, but I can tell you that evidence markers littered that entire street. Now, a block captain tells me that she was almost caught in the gunfire. April, just put down the guns, please. I went and want nobody else to go through what I went through. Karima Richardson has a picture of her 20-year-old son, Ramir Jackson, painted on the front of her Southwest Philly home. Someone shot him June 20th of last year, just around the corner. Innocent kids was out here. Innocent ones. And all y'all want to do is shoot. No, we t we're tired. Richardson is brought to tears today because the trauma of gunfire was literally close to home again. Police say people were firing at each other from opposite ends of the 5300 block of Chancellor Street. You just hear all these gunshots. And as I'm parking and I'm getting out the car, you see another young man. I don't know if he was just coming down retaliating or whatever, but he's just like shooting after the car. But... It's broad daylight with families out. Andrea Johnson is the block captain and had just gotten home when it happened. To come home and to almost be caught in gunfire, it's like one of the most heart disheartening things. Police say the call came in just after 5.30 this afternoon. 
upon police arrival, they located three individuals that were shot, one in the 54, one in the 54 on a block of Walnut Street. This husband and wife say they are looking to move their family off the block. A few seconds later, it was just a pop, pop, pop. We're like, obviously our kids are in the room. We're like, go upstairs in the back room, get away from it. It makes me worry. I, uh, to be honest, I've been trying to get my mother off, <laughs> off the block for a few years, but she raised her kids here. She had, you know, her husband died here. You know, my father died of a heart attack. You know, this is her home. Okay, this is our home. And again, Jason and Sheba, police say the three male victims are in stable condition. No arrests have been made. No weapon recovered. And so far, no motive. Shout out to the thugs and the young people in Philadelphia out here creating chaos, crime, corruption, Broad daylight shooting at each other. Neighbors getting caught in the crossfire. Don't nobody care about granny. Don't nobody care about the block captain. Don't nobody care about nobody. Everybody just going to take everybody's life. I keep telling y'all that it's a demonic spirit that's out here that's absolutely infecting and Im impacting how y'all live in your life on a daily basis. But y'all wanted it to be this way. In so many ways, we actually justified this. So many ways we justified it with our, our behavior. Mm, mm, mm. And then last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hated to have this conversation. I did not want to, I'm not going to lie to you. Of all of the things that I wanted to actually review today and the different things that was across my desk and I had to pick and I said, you know what, we're going to go with four instead of three. And I wanted to add this fourth one in here just so y'all can see that I'm not biased. Man shot somebody at the Chipotle over guacamole. Let me say that one more time. Listen, I'm not proud of my people. Of all the people that they can hold accountable, they hold Anton from Anton Daniels accountable. You got people out here shooting people over the counter over, the counter, over guacamole. Guacamole. You went into, into Chipotle. On guac about guacamole. And no, this is not Detroit. Let's just be clear. This is outside of Detroit, okay? This is not Detroit. This is Southfield, Michigan. I know a lot of people automatically want to tie it to the city. No, this is not Detroit, okay? All right, let's get into it. Police body cam video of a man being arrested after he allegedly shot a restaurant employee because he was angry about guacamole. The reason that this happened is because of poor decisions, inability to control emotions, and that's what led uh, to the shooting. It happened Friday night at the Chipotle on Evergreen in Southfield. This happened right across the street from the police station. So what's the nerve of that? It happened right across the street from the police station. Wow. You think you're going to get away with it? 32 year old Aaron Michael Brown arrested a short distance away at a press conference on Monday, a timeline. What's up with all these Michael Browns, too? Mr. Aaron Brown entered the Chipotle oh, restaurant with his wife. While standing at the register, Mr. Brown asked for extra guacamole on his food that he had just purchased. Police Wait, 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 wait. He had a wife? He walked in with a wife? Let me just replay that one more time. I just want to make sure that we all on the same page. Brown entered the Chipotle restaurant with his wife. While standing at the register, Mr. Brown asked for extra guacamole on his food that he had just purchased. Police say he was upset because it wasn't enough guacamole. Mr. Brown then called the female Chipotle employee a derogatory name of the B word, mm -hmm. which upset her understandably. Fellow employees took her to the back to try to calm her down, leaving the front counter unattended. Our suspect, Mr. Brown, uh, who previously had paid for his food items, uh, began to proceed to go around the counter and began to bag his own items. And then he took a cup and filled it with guacamole. A 21-year-old male employee tried to stop him. <laughs> physical altercation and then Brown, a licensed CPL holder with no prior criminal history, allegedly shoots the employee in the leg, then takes his food and calmly walks out. I was in my car and I saw him just walk out to his car, 
close the door and just drive off. Like he didn't he didn't speed off or anything. It was it was weird to see, but it was like you think you want to get out of there fast, but he it's like he didn't care. I mean, <laughs> as you can see, the people that's the witnesses over here. This is not a bad neighborhood. This is not the hood. This is not a bad bad neighborhood. This is not a space where you see a whole lot of gang activity or anything like that. It is very much a decent suburb. It is a very, very decent suburb. Um, imagine getting going to prison. Imagine going to prison and they say, hey, fam, what you went for? Yeah, man, I shot a dude over some guacamole. If this dude is that unhinged, over guacamole at a Chipotle across from a police station. I could only imagine what goes on inside of that household. I could only imagine what happens inside of that household. It's a strong possibility he got kids. He got a wife. And this dude is over there calling chicks bitches inside of the Southfield. I'm sorry. I'm just telling you what the news said. Calling chicks bees inside of the, the the Chipotle across the street from the police station. You go in and you bag your own stuff and then you shoot a dude in the leg. Jesus Christ. Yeah, they're going to say he a real one, Junior Larkin. You absolutely right. They're going to say he a real one. Now you're in prison over guac. It's very scary. I don't, I don't know. Brown is being held on a $20,000 cash bond and facing several charges, including assault with intent to do great bodily harm. The victim is expected to make a full recovery. Imagine going to work and getting shot in the leg over guacamole.